value added tax entries value added tax value added tax or VAT is a form of sales tax it is a tax on consumption levied on the sale barter exchange or lease of goods or properties or and services in the Philippines and on importation of goods into the Philippines it is an indirect tax <coughs> which may be shifted or passed on to the buyer, transfer or lessee of goods, properties, or services. The VAT rate in the Philippines is 12%. So ngayon ang topic natin, value add tax entries. And ang discuss namin sa inyo is yung basics lang, or very basic lang ng value added tax. So, ibig sabihin, since tayo ay nasa basic accounting purposes ng value-added tax entries, maraming mga provision about value-added tax ang aking hindi mababanggit dito sa video na to. Yung comprehensive um, lecture or yung in-depth lecture nyo ng value-added tax ay maa-encounter nyo sa subject na transfer and business taxation. So again, marami akong, maraming mga provisions ng value-added tax ang hindi mapanggit dito sa video na to kasi nga, ang focus lang nito ay yung basics lang ng recording ng value-added tax entries. The VAT rate in the Philippines is 12%. So for VAT purposes kasi, meron pa tayong tinatawag na export sales, um, VAT exem sales, at yung regular sale. Ang rate ng export and other zero-rated sales, ang VAT rate niya is hindi 12%. Kung hindi, um, 0%. So, ibig sabihin, ang VAT rate sa Pilipinas is 0% para sa export sales and other zero-rated sales. And yung ating 12% na VAT rate sa mga regular sales. So, sa value-added tax entries, may may encounter kayo na account na input VAT at output VAT. Ang input VAT, ito yung value-added tax you pay on purchases. Ang output VAT, ito yung value-added tax you add on sales. So, itong value-added tax na to, malamang nakapagbayad na kayo nito, kapag kayo ay bumibilik ng mga items sa supermarket or sa department store. So, nag malamang nagbabayad na kayo nitong tinatawag natin na value added um, tax. Kagaya nga ng binanggit kanina, itong value added tax ay malamang nagbayad na kayo nan nung kayo ay bumibili sa mga supermarket at sa department store. So, may sample ako dito ng um, sales invoice. So, ito, sales invoice siya uh, issued by Pure Gold Price Club Incorporated sales invoice. So, ibig sabihin, sa invoice na to, si Pure Gold Price Club ang seller at ako naman yung um, buyer. So, bumili ako kay Pure Gold. Inisyohan niya ako ng resibo. So, sa point of view ni Pure Gold, ito ay benta. Sa point of view ko, ito naman ay um, purchase. So, sales invoice, actually mahaba siya. Ayan. And, kagaya nga nung binanggit kanina, yung value added tax ay malamang ma-encounter nyo na to kapag kayo ay bumibili ng mga item. So, ito. Ayan. Subtotal ng binili is 2,016.90. So, yan yung binayaran ko sa Pure Gold. And papansin natin, meron ditong breakdown ng 2,016.90. Which is itong vatable sale na 1,800.80. At yung value added tax na 12% ng 1,800.80 which is 216.10. So, ibig sabihin, doon sa 2016.19 na binayarang kay Pure Gold, 
may portion doon na binayaran ko yung value added tax. And remember, value added tax is a form of sales tax and it is an indirect tax which may be shifted or passed on to the buyer. So sa case na to, si Pure Gold si Pure Gold Price Club yung seller. So meron siyang sales tax dahil nagbenta siya sa akin. And yung sales tax na yon pinasa niya sa kanyang buyer. Pinasa niya sa akin. So yung sales tax niya na magkano yun? Ito. Na 12% na 216.10. Ako yung nagbayad. Pinasa niya sa akin yung sales tax niya or yung value added tax niya na 216.10 kasi binayara ko siya. Kasama siya dun sa portion ng 2016.90 na aking binayaran dun sa pure gold. Input VAT, VAT you pay on purchases and output VAT, VAT you add on sale. So, balikan natin yung resibo na ginagapit natin for illustration purposes. 216.10 Okay, sa tingin nyo, itong value added tax at 12% na 216.10, yan ba ay input VAT or output VAT? Sabi, kapag input VAT, VAT you pay on purchases. Kapag output VAT naman, VAT you add on sales. VAT, sa resibo ng illustration natin, 216.10, input VAT or output VAT? Ano sa tingin nyo? Okay. Sa point of view ko, ito ay input VAT. Kasi ako yung bumili sa pure gold. VAT you pay on purchases. Sa point of view naman, ni pure gold, ito ay output VAT. Kasi yan yung value added tax na dinagdag niya sa kanyang sales. So, kapag output VAT sa point of view ni seller, kapag input VAT sa point of view ni buyer. Okay, illustration. The store at Elm Street is a VAT-registered business. The store's credit terms to its customer is 2 over 10 and over 30. And its suppliers are all VAT-registered entities. In October 2020, the following transactions occurred. All transactions involving sale and purchases of goods are VAT inclusive. So, tandaan natin ito ha. VAT inclusive pala yung lahat ng am amounts na, na, na involved sa sale and purchase transactions. So, ang gagawin natin dito, yung journal entry natin, yung mga transactions ni the store October 3 sold goods on account to Lim company 56,000 pesos FOB shipping point prepaid paid freight on the shipment to Lim company 2,240 so dalawang transaction yung sale of merchandise tsaka yung payment ng um, freight charges so paano natin i-record yun Unahin natin yung uh, sale of merchandise. So, October 3. To record yung transaction ng October 3. October 3. Debit. Accounts receivable. Fifty-six thousand. Credit output VAT Remember, yung 56,000 dito ay VAT inclusive. So, kailangan natin siyang i-breakdown sa VAT sa amount na mapupunta sa VAT at sa amount na mapupunta dun sa sales account. 56,000 uh, divided by 112% 
times 12 percent. So kapag VAT inclusive yung amount, to determine yung value added tax, we have to divide lang the amount by 112 percent at imumultiply natin siya sa 12 percent. So the output VAT is 6,000 pesos. And yung sales is 50,000 pesos. Paano nakuha yun? 56,000 VAT inclusive. <coughs> Kapag dinivide natin yan yung sa 112%, makukuha natin yung 100% ng um, basis dun sa value added tax. So debit accounts receivable, credit output VAT, <coughs> credit sales. Although wala namang binanggit na requirement, i-record na rin natin kung paano kaya sa side naman ng buyer ni the store, i-record itong October 3 transaction. So sa point of view naman ng buyer, debit purchases, 50,000 debit input VAT, VAT you pay on purchases. 6,000 credit yung total payable niya na 56,000 pesos. Next, yung freight charges na 2,240. Okay. FOB shipping point. Freight prepaid. Sino ang dapat magbayad ng freight pag shipping point? Si buyer. Pero sino ang nagbayad talaga ng freight? Kung si buyer ang dapat magbayad, dapat si buyer din ang magbayad ng freight charges. Pero freight prepaid. Ibig sabihin, si seller ang nagbayad ng freight charges. So, si buyer dapat ang magbabayad, pero si seller ang nagbayad. So, ibig sabihin, may utang pa si buyer kay the store. So, to record yung freight charges na to, debit accounts receivable, 2,240. Debit accounts receivable, 2,240. Credit cash. 2,240. Bakit accounts receivable ang debit? Kasi hindi naman yan um, expense ni seller. Kasi nga, ang dapat magbayad ng transportation cost ay si buyer. So si buyer dapat ang mag-record ng expense. And hindi rin natin record yung input VAT kasi nga, hindi naman natin expense yung freight. Yan ay freight Ah, yan ay freight ni buyer. Yan ay expense ni um, buyer. So, to record yung freight charges sa point of view naman ni buyer, debit, freight in, debit, input VAT, kasi siya naman talaga yung may um, responsibility sa freight siya ay dapat yung magbayad sa kanya dapat na expense yan kaya siya yung nag-record ng input VAT and credit accounts payable kasi nga utang niya yan kay seller at what amount? 2,240 divided by 112% times 12% 2,000 2,240 divided by 112% times 12% Ah, sorry, dapat wala palang 12% to. Okay, ulitin natin. Freight in 2,240 divided by 112% para makuha natin yung basis ng value added tax. And yung input VAT naman, 2,240 divided by 112% times 12% 1,000 
that is 240 pesos accounts payable 2240 